Hey y'all, welcome back to another video. It's your girl Shay. And today I want to talk about just the difference Um, the reason why I'm talking about this today is because I didn't know if you guys on Saturday. Um, because I had a I had another idea in mind, but the Lord He told me He wanted me to talk to you about you guys about fact and fiction. What's the difference between the two? And um, because you know. He, this is what God told me. He said, in these last last days, final hours, before the, the coming of Jesus Christ, the spirit of religion is riding really high. It's riding high. Um, because it's sent out to confuse the people. It's sent out to control the people. And it's just... It's, it's the last throes of the enemy because, like I said, Christ is soon to return and Satan wants to take as many people to hell as he possibly can. That's just the truth. That's just the reality. And so one of the ways he does it, he tries to get people to hell, is through their belief system, through what they believe and how they believe. The, um, he What he will do is that he will try to distort who God is, what he wants, what he desires, and he he manipulates the minds of people. He deceives people. And if he can't really if if the if the enemy cannot get you to not believe there is a God, like I said, what he will do is he will try to make it seemed like this God that you want to know, what you want to get to, that you want to have a relationship with. It's very, he's very mean. He's nasty. You can't go anywhere. You can't do anything. You can't think anything. <laughs> yeah, so you know you have to be this some this homebody, this person that doesn't have a a life. You know you don't have any life. You don't have of that that relationship with God that you really need to have with Him, and He will do that through the demon, the demon called religion. And if we are not careful in our walk with Christ, we will allow that spirit to attack us, and that spirit will attack you through by what you look at on TV what you look at on the internet, what you entertain out in your community, at home. Um, that that particular spirit will, like I said, it will confuse you. It will distort um, your your view of who God is. It will, it will lie to you. It will, hmm, it'll put a blinder over your eyes. You won't see how you need to see. You won't know what you need to know. You won't feel the way that you need to feel. Because that the, 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 that 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 spirit got you blocked. That spirit got you blocked. You won't get blessings and miracles that you need to get. Yeah. You won't get it, period, because it won't allow you to, because it will not allow your mind to think outside of what your little sphere is. It won't allow you to get the healing and the deliverance that you need. It will not allow that, because if you get that deliverance, if you get it, you'll be able to see what the enemy really is doing. You'll be able to see what it has done and you'll be able to see what it will do again. And so 
we have to be careful, especially as preachers, teachers, um, ministers of the gospel. We really have to be careful about what we're saying to people when we're out ministering, when we're out witnessing, when we're out preaching, when we're prophesying. We have to be careful because that it that spirit it it'll it, if it finds a crack, it'll slip right in and make a complete hole. And we don't need that. So when we're out preaching and teaching, we have to watch our opinions. We have to watch our opinions. Uh, what What is an opinion? Okay, an opinion. Let me get the Webster's Dictionary. <laughs> let's, get the, let's get the Webster's Dictionary, okay, on opinions. Because we, we have to watch that spirit and watch how it operates. So we won't allow ourselves to get caught up in it, okay? All right, let's see. Opinion, opinion, opinion. Opinion. All right, here it is. Uh, an opinion is a belief stronger than impression and less strong than positive knowledge. Another another um, the definition of it is judgment. And the last definition of it is a formal statement by an expert after careful study. The Bible says for us that we should to study uh, to show ourselves approved workmen who are made not ashamed. So if you're going to study anything in the Bible, you're going to study any subject um, that that you're studying for your Bible studies or your 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 weekly sermons or your your whatever you're doing. Have a thorough study. Have a careful study. As to what you're talking about. Because you don't want to mislead people. You don't want to throw people off. You know, we don't want to, you don't want to um, have people to miss the mark. And we've done that. We've, we've done that in time memorial. We have done that. We have allowed our, 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 our belief stronger than impression and less strong than a positive knowledge to cause people to go astray. And we don't want to do that. We want to be able to preach and teach prophesy correctly. We want to be able to minister to people correctly. We have to do a careful study. Okay? Here's what fact means. I'm going to, going to find out what fact means. Okay, fact. All right. Here is what fact means. It can mean deed or crime. Well, crime for, you know, accessory after the fact. Okay? And then here it is. The quality of being actual. Here's another definition for fact. Something that exists or occurs. And the last definition of a piece of information. We have to make sure that if we're going to speak facts, that it's actual facts. And you do that through careful study. That means you go research. That means you go read read different books. You look at different docu series. You you do you talk to people. That's how you get a fact. That's how you get a fact. And and you get these facts through first when you go to God in prayer and ask God to to let you see what you need to see. Hear what you need to hear and know what you need to know. And you cleanse, I'm sorry, you cleanse yourself out and you let God's spirit pour himself into you so he can show you what's fact and what's just somebody's opinion. Okay? We really need to be careful, you guys. We need to be careful about this, especially with this vaccine. We need to stop telling people that it's the mark of the beast. It's not. <laughs> now, I understand. I understand because of how the, our government systems work, because of how, how they do things and how they treat the people. And I, I, I understand. I, I, I totally get it. I, I, I get it. Totally get it. I get it. But... Once again, let's try not to make 
our opinions a fact. Okay? Yes, I do believe that the coronavirus is just um, a, a, a virus they send out to control the population. I do believe that. I do believe that because of how quick it came along and how quick it killed people. I do believe that. I do believe that this vaccine came out too quick. I do believe that. Too fast. Too fast. But do I believe this is the mark of the beast? No. Not at all. Because you know why? The Bible says that when the Antichrist comes into power, they are going to have to take the mark of the beast on the right hand or the forehead. Right hand, forehead. Once again, right hand, forehead, not the arm. Okay? Let's stop this. Let's stop this. Well, where in the Bible does it say that? I'm glad you asked. Let, let, let me go ahead and just, just show you where it is. I ain't going to be before you long. <laughs> it's in Revelations chapter 13, starting at verse 16. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads. And that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. When we, when we, ain't, I, I won't say we, when they, Take the mark of the beast. It will actually be a number. It's going to be a number that's going to be put on the right hand or on the forehead. That's what it's going to be. Now, do I believe this is a test run for it? Possibly. It could be. I wouldn't doubt it. Because of how quick they, how they turn to force it on everybody. Yeah. Wouldn't doubt it. But what I ask for you all to do is pray. Ask God, do you need to take this vaccine? And if you're not feeling led to take it, then don't take it. Do what the Lord says. If you don't feel led to take it, sweetheart, don't take it. But if you're feeling led by the Spirit to take it, then you take it. God will cover both the vaccinated and the unvaccinated. He will heal both the vaccinated and the unvaccinated. Okay. Let's be mindful and let us be conscious of what we say, y'all, and how and what what we do. Yes, Christ is soon to return. Yes, he is. But let's not lie to people and let's not manipulate people to get them into the kingdom. Let's not do that. Let us be honest at all times. Let us be righteous at all times, okay? Let us be real. They, pe they don't need nothing else fake. They need people that's going to be real with them. They don't need nobody. We done had enough fakeness to last us four or five centuries. Let us continue to be real with the people. Let us continue to be honest. Okay? I love you guys. And I will see you next Saturday. And don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Okay? Love y'all. Bye.